Hello and welcome to this tutorial where I'm going to show you how to build a blog sample in Next.js using Oracle Content Management as a headless CMS. My name is Sarah Mazin and I'm a developer at Oracle working on the content management headless samples. The Oracle Content Management documentation contains full information on the sample and will cover what I'm going through in this demo in more detail. The sample is publicly available on GitHub and is already hooked up to Oracle Content Management. This code on GitHub is available for you to contribute to and give feedback on. So let's start by cloning the repository. You can use any editor or IDE of your choice. I use Video Studio Code. So let's just pop over there and open up the project. Now, the first thing we're going to want to do is install all the dependencies. So let's open up a terminal and type npm install. Whilst that's installing, let's just take a look at the project structure. Next.js lets you build server-side rendered or static site generated applications using React. This sample was created using Next.js's command line interface, which creates the project and sets up everything for you. It is fully documented on their website. The components folder contains any reusable components which simply render content. Any data is passed into these components and we'll look at those later. The pages folder contains the components associated with a root based on its name. Unlike frameworks such as React and Vue, in Next.js there's no configuration file or component which specifies the routes and the components in which those render those routes. Next.js will assume any component in this folder is a root, and we'll come back to these page components later. The public folder contains any public assets. The scripts folder contains any of the code that's getting data from Oracle Content Management to be rendered in this sample. The styles folder contains any style sheets used in this sample. The number of files at the root of this project which are worth noting. The EMV local configuration file contains a number of environment variables used in the sample. It contains the URL of the content server and the token of the channel in which all the assets have been published to. It is considered best practice to use an EMV file to contain sensitive data for your application and not check it into your source control system. Therefore, when you use this sample for your own purposes, you'll most likely want to take this out of source control. The next config file is for custom advanced configuration of Next, and I won't be going into this file in this sample. Take a look at the Next.js documentation for any further information. Finally, there's the packet.json. It's a typical Node.js file where it contains the dependencies for the project along with some scripts you're going to want to use to build and run the application. Now that the dependencies have been installed, let's build the project. Run npm run build. The build is now complete. From the build output here, you can see that it has determined the URLs for every route in the application and pre-generated the pages. It did this by calling certain methods in each page component to get the data on all the child routes. And we'll go into that later. You'll see that it's built this .next directory containing the built application. Now let's run the application by running npm run start. This would just start up a server and serve up the content in the next directory. You can see here the URL of the server, so let's just go to that. So this is our sample in action. You can see here our homepage contains of a company logo, a company name, and a couple of links in a header. It also contains a list of topics. When you click on a single topic, you're taken to the articles details page, articles list page, and those list the articles for that selected topic. If you click on a particular article, 
you get to see the article details, including its author, its content. You also see these breadcrumbs to enable you to go back up through the sample. All of the data for this sample is coming from Oracle Content Management. We have an asset type defined for this home page. We also have an asset type defined for topics and for articles and for the author of an article. We then have actual assets created of those asset types and they're published to a channel so they're available in our sample. Let's go and have a look at the actual code for our project. As I said earlier, the scripts folder contains all the files where it's getting data for Oracle Content Management. Oracle Content Management makes available a content SDK for anyone who wants to build a headless application in a framework such as Next.js, Vue, Angular, etc. The server config utils file is where we are creating the Oracle Content SDK. You can see here at the top, we're importing the methods that we want to use from the Oracle Content SDK. At the bottom of the file is where we are creating our client for the content use SDK. And we're using variables that have been defined in that EMV local file mentioned earlier. The rest of this code in this file is when your sample is getting data from a secure channel or a channel whose items have not yet been published. We won't be going into those methods. The services file contains methods that encapsulate calls to the content SDK and return the results back to the React components to be rendered. It uses the client that was created in the server config utils. So let's look at one example. Let's look at the fetch home page. Here it's getting all the data that is needed to render the home page. It uses the SDK client and it queries the content management for any asset type of OCE getting started homepage that has a name of homepage. It pulls out data from the results. It then, for each topic that's been returned, it makes another call to the con content SDK and the content server to get information on that particular topic. And then all the data is returned to the calling method. In this file, there's also a fetch topic articles function used to get all the data for the second page, the articles list page, and another one fetch article details for all the details for the third page. In short, this file contains all the content SDK calls the samples need to render their data. The other file under scripts is this util files, and it just contains a couple of utility functions. As we mentioned earlier, under components, contains all the reusable components. These components simply render markup and all its data is passed to it. You can see here the header component. If I can just drag that down, you can see the properties are passed in and then we get the data out of that data passed in and we simply render it. You can see it's rendering a company logo, it's rendering the title and those, uh, those links. The topics list item renders information about a single topic and it's used on that home page to render a summary of each topic. It's got a link on it so that when you click on it, you go to the articles list page. The articles list item renders information about a single article and it's used in the articles page to render a summary of each article. Finally, the breadcrumbs and the breadcrumb components are used to render those breadcrumbs at the top of the articles list page and articles detail page to enable you to navigate back up. Let's look at the components for each route, which are contained in the pages folder. The home page is rendered by the index component. The articles list page is rendered by the components under articles IDJSX. And this means the route for the articles list page will be slash articles slash the ID of the topic. The article details page is rendered by the component under article IDJSX. And this means the route for an article details page is slash article slash article ID. 
file under API is for when the sample is using content from a secure channel or assets which have not yet been published. And we're not covering that in this tutorial. In each file, you will see the component is defined at the top here. The data to the component is passed in in its properties here. And then it simply renders the data for that passed in data. At the bottom of the file, you'll see it's got this prop types defining the structure of the data passed into the component. Below the component dependencies are one of one or two special functions. The get static props is called during build to get the data for the component. The data returned from this method is what is we passed into the component above. For the home page, we can see that is simply getting a list of all the topics that are going to be rendered in that home page. Looking at the articles list page, again at the top, we've got the rendering and the data passed in. And then we've got this get static props and get static paths method. You can see that to get static props, it's getting the ID off the URL for the topic that's been selected. And then it gets all the details for that particular topic. So it's returning all the data that it needs to render for a single topic. The get static paths function is also called during the build process and it's used by Next.js to determine the possible routes for the articles list page. This function will get the list of topic IDs and return them so Next.js can build up all the different URLs for the articles page. For example, slash articles slash one slash articles slash two and so on. And you can see the article details page is in similar format. You've got the rendering at the top with the data passed in. And then you've got at the bottom the get static props, which is getting the data for a single page and the get static path, which is returning all the URLs of the articles details page. So that's this blog sample. We have written a number of other sample tutorials in different frameworks, such as a minimal site and a gallery site written in Next.js, as well as a minimal site, image gallery and blog written in React, Vue and Angular. Please take a look at our documentation that shows you all the different samples. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it useful.